If you're tired of watching your carefully crafted launch emails underperform, then it might be time for a few tweaks. So come along with me because today I'm sharing a few different strategies that you can test to make your emails work smarter, not harder, so that you're not starting from scratch. And if you're new around here, hi, I'm Brittany McBean. I am a marketing strategist and conversion copywriter, but today we're talking a little bit more about strategy and optimization instead of copy. If you're a business owner writing your own copy or you're tracking copy a copywriter has written for you, this is for you. But I also know there's a lot of copywriters watching. So I just wanna take a second to say, if you have been hired to write copy, your only job is copy. It's probably not your job to test and optimize. You're hired to write copy, period, end of story. If you're partnering with your client as a strategist or CMO, you're likely gonna be working on some of the strategy, the testing, the optimizing, and the tracking, so it's good for you to know this stuff. But it's also important to know what's in and out of scope if you've been hired to just write copy. The stuff we're talking about today definitely falls under the strategy umbrella. If you are selling an online course, a membership, a coaching program, a digital offer, you probably know the power of email marketing. Depending on your industry, the data shows us that you're gonna earn anywhere from 360 to a 400% ROI with email marketing. And if you are live launching online or running an evergreen funnel, there are a lot of emails. Now look, your marketing is not pass fail. That means if an email, a landing page, a campaign, a promo, an offer didn't work or perform the way you want it to, we don't throw it away. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Your job is to dive in, figure out what's going on, not to just get rid of it and start over again. With marketing, if something works, we wanna know why it works so we can do more of it. And if something doesn't work, we wanna figure out what's not working so we can optimize, fix it, and then do more of what is working. So we test. In marketing, Testing means having a control and a variable to test against each other with enough data points to determine a clear winner. Basically, you're split testing two different things against each other, gathering enough information so that you can see what's actually working. And you need to make sure that you either have enough traffic or enough time so that your data is significant and not anecdotal. So if you split test one headline and only 50 people land on that page, well, you don't have enough information. So today I'm going to give you 13 different ideas that you can test. You don't have to test all of them, but 13 different things. Some of them are pretty simple that you can dive in, tweak and test to figure out how to optimize your emails and get them performing better in your next launch. We're talking boost in open rates, click-through rates, and ultimately conversions so that you are driving more revenue the next time you open your cart or improve your evergreen funnel. All right, the first two things, I actually want you to start before you launch. Maybe do this anywhere from 30 to 90 days before you're gonna open your cart. And the first one I'm kind of cheating because this isn't really testing, it's just something I'm telling you to do. If you have not scrubbed your list in the last year, we're gonna start by doing that now. We're gonna start by doing some spring cleaning so that all of our other data that we grab after this is going to be clean and optimized. So when we scrub our list, we are cleaning out all of the old or unengaged subscribers so that we only have a list of engaged and interested subscribers that we are actually gathering accurate data from. Otherwise, you're gonna have lower numbers that don't really reflect what's actually going on with your people. Yes, it can be a hard pill to swallow to watch thousands of people jump off your email list at the exact same time, but ultimately what you're doing is you're increasing your open rate, increasing your click-through rate, increasing your engagement, all of which increase your deliverability. That's a good thing. More people getting, reading, opening, engaging with your emails. All of those things increase your conversion rates. And most email service providers make you pay by the amount of people on your email list. So when you lower the number of people on your list, you're actually lowering your bill, putting more money back in your pocket. All right, thing number two, we're going to test the days and times that people are the most likely to open and engage with your emails. Even if you've done this before, I want you to do it again, especially if you have not done this since before the pandemic. People's habits have changed, whether they are now working from home or now working hybrid, or their home life has changed, or their childcare situation has changed. It's likely that their lifestyle or their habits have changed. Let's figure out what life looks for your email list right now. Again, we wanna make sure we're not just getting anecdotal evidence. So make sure you're split testing only two things at a time, a control and a variable. Maybe one month you're only testing days, and then once you find the best days to send your email list, in the next month you're gonna test times. All right, what can you test during launch time? Let's go rapid fire, because we don't need to make this more complicated than it has to be. Thing number three, Personalization. When you add a merge tag, that thing that puts your audience's first name in the email, how do they respond? Does it freak them out that you know their first name and that you're using their first name in their email? Or do they love it? 
Your audience is going to be different. How do they respond? This can depend on the demographic, the subject matter of the email, the generation. Some people love being addressed by their first name. Some people hate it. Figure it out. All right, this next one, I really need to do a whole video on because I could dive deep into this, but segment, 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 and micro segment. How deeply and strategically can you segment your audience and then maybe send some slightly more personalized emails during your launch to increase conversions? Do you have people that are right for your program that might be at different levels of learning or in different parts of the world or with different lifestyles or in different demographics or different generations that are going to respond to the information in different ways or maybe in different formats or in different packages? How could you send some slightly more customized emails without reinventing the wheel every time to increase conversions based on who you are sending it to? Number five, I want you to see if your audience responds better to clear or clever subject lines. I know everyone tells you to A-B split test subject lines, but we have found that during launches, people respond much better to straightforward, clear, telling you exactly what is inside the email subject lines as opposed to a subject line that maybe entices you to open or piques curiosity that we usually see success with in like a broadcast or newsletter type email. So like, for example, a like clever or like curiosity peaking headline might be something like, don't do this. This is exciting. She did what? To be honest, those aren't great subject lines, but I'm just grabbing out of thin air. As opposed to what might perform much better in a launch is something like what you get inside of program name, and then that's your product tour email. Or doors are closing in 48 hours. Or for a case study email, something like how she did X and then like very concisely sum up the transformation, plus a bonus. Or for like your FAQ email, something like most people ask this question. All right, number six, testing the preview text. Okay, when you get a push notification or even in your inbox, you're going to see the subject line and then like a sentence or two, meh, usually about a sentence, of the first few lines of the email. That is customizable. If you don't customize it, you're just going to see the first few lines of the email. If you do customize it, it's actually a strategy. It's not super exciting to see, hey, so-and-so, so I've ever told you about the time I, it's not a great way to start an email anyway, but you can actually use the preview text as a strategy to get more people to open your email. This is usually about 150 characters, so you wanna use that copy wisely, but only test one thing at a time and test it against the control. Make sure you're making note of what you're testing and what is working so that you can actually understand what's working and do more of it. Number seven, this is a non-negotiable for me. I included in all of my client projects and client emails. I think this is something you should do instead of just testing, but we'll pretend like it's optional for now. And that is providing an opt-out option in every single one of your sales emails. So what this is, is rather than having someone unsubscribe, if they don't want to see any more of your sales emails about a particular offer or promotion, you are giving them an option to opt out of that promotion for a certain period of time or for that offer. You are drastically decreasing your unsubscribes. You're allowing your audience to consent to these emails. You're increasing your conversions because every single person that gets these emails has said, yes, please, please keep sending me these sales emails. And it allows you to only send relevant information and keep nurturing people who might not be ready to buy your offer. I actually include this as a snippet at the top of all of our launch emails, not even at the bottom. It's the first thing somebody sees when they open the emails. I want them to see that before they see the unsubscribe button. Number eight is kind of related. So this is a behavior tag in your emails. This sounds techy. It is super simple. Basically, you are going to tag people based on their behavior within the promotion or the email sequence, and then you're going to do something about that with that tag. This is not about being big brother. This is about understanding who is really engaging with this launch, with this promo, and might want some extra information or some extra communication from you. So for example, maybe in all of the emails that you send, you are tagging everyone who clicks on the sales page. So they read your email, they clicked on the link to go to the sales page, and you were tagging that person as a strong lead or hyper engaged. And then maybe everyone with that tag gets a couple extra emails. So you're not spamming the people who never click the sales page or just reading your emails just to read them or just for the fun of it, but the people who are engaged and are interested but have not bought yet are getting some extra emails and some extra communication. Maybe you're tagging people who 
clicked to watch the replay of a webinar. Maybe you made them a video during the launch that you sent through BombBomb or Video Ask, and you are tagging the people who clicked on that so that you can follow back up with them. Be chill about it, don't spam them, but if there is a group of people that have continued to engage and engage further with your launch, maybe you can send them one or two extra or follow-up emails. Number nine is using more social proof in your emails. Don't just save the testimonials and the case studies for the sales page. Sprinkle in more screenshots, more social proof, more case studies in your emails. Don't make them super long and lengthy, but if you can tell more stories about people's success, if you can share more screenshots, if you can use more testimonials in your emails and provide social proof so that their words speak stronger than yours, that person isn't taking your credit card, the person providing the testimonial isn't taking their credit card, you are, let the person who had the transformation speak for your offer stronger than you can. Number 10, share behind the scenes. Don't try to be polished. Let people know what is actually going on with you, with your life, with this launch. Share the real time behind the scenes of your launch. Even if you're not selling a B2B product, don't make something up like, I've been getting so many questions about, or my DM is full of people asking me X. We all know that's not true. Tell me what this week has really been like for you. Did some tech break? Has this been really exhausting? Has it been really fun? What has this been like? If somebody did ask you a question, share a freaking screenshot so we believe that somebody asked you that. Did you change your mind about something? Did something happen that you never expected? Did someone make a request? And if they did, ask permission to share a screenshot, otherwise we just don't believe you. Number 11, Test out hyperlinked URLs versus like a call to action button. Basically, do you have a hyperlinked text where I can just click on the text and it's gonna send me to the sales page? Or is there a button almost like you would see on a sales page that says like click here or learn more and there's an actual button in the email that looks like a designed button that I click to go to the sales page. Depending on your audience, a lot of times it depends generationally. Some people don't trust that call to action button. It might look too polished. It might look like it came from a company or some people don't trust that hyperlink. It might look spammy or salesy to them. Some people might love the hyperlink with your weekly broadcast, but for a sales email that call call to action button just stands out to them and drives them to action. Test it out, test one against the other, see what gets the most clicks. Number 12, test the number of call to actions in your emails. Okay, look, two things about this. Number one, when you are trying to improve click-through rate, do not just increase the call to actions, okay? You are increasing actual sales copy, actual sales arguments, actual messaging, actual body copy. You don't just increase click-through rate by throwing in more call to actions. Sometimes it helps, that's not always the go-to. And number two, in a sales email, there is one and only one place to go. We are not saying go to the sales page or my Instagram or this or that. like one URL, one link, we are only sending them to one place off the email unless we are saying reply if you have any questions. That's like the only other time I'm cool with there being like a second call to action. That includes those little like social buttons and links that you have like at the bottom of your email template. Delete those during your launch emails. Don't send them other places. But I do want you to play around with the number of call to actions in your emails. Do you have a higher click-through rate if you have one hyperlink or like call to action button? versus two or three. Play around with it, get some data. Now look, you might have to test over a couple different launches just because there's so many different ways to test this. You're gonna test like one, two, three, um, a mix of the call to action, a mix of the hyperlink. So you might wanna test out a couple, this over like a long period of time and gather some data, but this is worth checking out and seeing what works for you. Okay, 13th and final, who makes a video with like 13 tips? Nobody does that, right? 13th and final, test adding or removing pictures and GIFs in your emails. Some audiences get way more engagement, way more click-through rate if there are pictures or GIFs in their emails, and some audiences get way less because it feels like it's coming from a company or it feels like a sales email if there are images in it. So sometimes text only can improve deliverability because it doesn't trigger spam filters and it can improve engagement because it feels more personal. And sometimes having images or GIFs can just make it more fun and more engaging. So test it out and figure out what works for your people. Oh my gosh, that was so many things. You do not have to go into your next launch testing all of those things. 
Pick maybe two because you won't be able to collect data if you're testing all of those, especially over just one launch. And then maybe throughout the year, test a couple other things and figure out what works best for your broadcast and your newsletter emails and what works best for your launch emails. You're gonna have to track it. So make sure that you grab the email tracker that I've created for you. It is completely free where you can track all of the data you can track your conversion rates, your click-through rates, you can keep notes based on what you are testing so that you can know exactly what is working and what is not working. This is the exact tracker that I use with my clients. There's a video in there where I teach you how to use it. I also teach you how to go in and like optimize your emails and what to look for. There's like a mini training in there. It's completely free, just grab it. I'll link it down below, but it's just brittanymcbean.com forward slash the launch sidekick. Grab that up, plug it into your business, customize it for however you need and track your emails. All right, happy launch and I will see you in the next video.